Hey guys, welcome back to another solar experiment video. Today's video was requested by many viewers after watching my popular Fresnel lens solar panel video. In that video, I compared the output of a mini solar panel, the one you see right here in full sun when the sun was at the highest point in the sky, to the same panel used with the Fresnel magnifying lens to increase light intensity on the mini panel. As we saw in that video, the power output increased substantially using the Fresnel lens, but along with the increased light intensity came increased heat on the solar panel, and as a result of that increased heating, the voltage dropped off. So this panel started around 4.9 volts using the Fresnel lens, and as this continued to heat up, it reached a point where it leveled off right around 4.1 volts. Even though the voltage output dropped to around 4.1, the current output on this panel which was four and a half times as much using the Fresnel lens than just placing this in the sun, that was fairly consistent throughout the whole time. Many viewers asked, is it possible to cool this solar panel down enough to get the voltage to not drop as much while using the Fresnel lens? So in this video, we're gonna try it out. The first thing I'm going to do is a power output test on this mini solar panel using this USB test device right here it displays output voltage, current, as well as power. Keep in mind, this mini solar panel is not exactly the ideal panel for powering USB devices. The output voltage in full sun is between 4.5 volts and 4.9 volts. Ideally, I'd like to see that voltage around 5.3 to 5.5. And the reason why the voltage is lower is because we only have nine different solar cells connected in series and each one has a voltage of around 0.5 to 0.55. So that's how you arrive at that 4.5 to 4.9 volts. This panel's been sitting in the sun for a while. So what I'm going to do is position it right at the sun. The sun is at the highest point in the sky right now. The weather today is absolutely beautiful. It's around 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23C. Nice and sunny, not a cloud around. Okay, the panel's now set up perpendicular to the sun. It's been sitting here for a few minutes. Let's take a temperature reading on the surface. Hopefully you can see that. 125, and we hit this button here, 52.2C. Remember that for later when we compare it to the Fresnel lens. Now I'm going to connect up the module. Right over here. Before I change the camera angle so you can see this very clearly, let's take a Lux reading. And it looks like it's around 80,300 lux. Now let's zoom in on the USB tester. Okay, I had to shade it because it was very hard to see. We're flashing all zeros. You push the button. It says 000 with a P. That's zero watts. 4.6 volts sitting in the sun. So you can see that panel is definitely a lower voltage panel. Each one of those cells probably around 0.52. Let's push it again. And that's how many amps. So let's go over here. Let me increase this to 50 milliamp setting. 0.05. Right there. All right. Now I'm going to push on. And now we're going to take a look at the readings. So we're at 0.2 watts. 4.3 volts. So we're down to 4.3 already. With only 50 milliamps of current being drawn. 05, let's go a little higher here. Let's put it at 60 milliamps. 0.2, 4.2. Okay, let's try just a little bit more to make it 70. And you can see it's starting to flicker because it can't handle it. Let's go back to 6. So this panel can handle around 60 milliamps, 0.2 watts, and 4.2 volts is where it drops to. And as you just saw, the power output from this panel is so low that it would take your cell phone a while to charge up using only 50 or 60 milliamps. Something like this is really only good for charging up small USB cameras like the spy pen here, as well as other small gadgets. Now right over here on the back of the solar panel, you can see that there's a negative right here, negative there, positive and positive. In order to mount this onto an aluminum heat sink, like I'm about to show you, I had to take these areas on the heat sink and drill them out so they can drop into the heat sink. 
and I also coated each one of these connections with clear nail polish, two coats. Now let's take a look at the heatsink. Now I know there's going to be viewers that say, why did you bother doing this experiment? You can go out and buy a solar panel that's a little bit bigger to get the same output instead of doing what you did. But you have to understand, people like to see these experiments. And many of these experiments come from viewer suggestions. Right over here is the heat sink. It's very large, has a bunch of ribs on the back, which I'll show you in a minute. And you can see I drilled out the areas, four of them. And these little channels right here are for the wires to pass through. I need to make sure that the mini solar panel lays perfectly flat on here and I'm going to be bonding that mini solar panel to this heat sink using thermal adhesive. I want that layer of thermal adhesive to be as thin as possible. Now before I apply the thermal adhesive to the back of this panel and bond it to the heat sink, I just want to say something very quickly. After watching this video, if you enjoyed it, then please be sure to share the video link with friends and post it on social networking sites. A lot of time goes into making these videos, filming, editing, answering countless viewer questions, and I also have to buy materials as well as electronic test equipment for these videos. And if a video doesn't get at least 50,000 views on YouTube, it's a total waste of time because I will not be making any money on the video. It's just going to end up being a lot of work with no compensation. And as we all know, you cannot work for free. So please share if you'd like to see many more helpful and educational videos on this channel. Okay, let me bond the mini panel to the heat sink so we can finish up with the testing. Okay, the solar panel is now bonded to that heat sink and I allowed it to set up for about 30 minutes. Right here, you can see how nicely the light is concentrated on that panel. 4.9 volts, hopefully you can see that. And let's take a temperature reading right now. That's 137 or 58 C. Now without cooling this, it went as high as 206 or 207 F or around 97.5 C. So I wanna keep an eye on this to see what the temperature is going to do. Let's take a look at the Lux reading. Let's see the intensity of light. 116,000 lux and you have to realize it's going to be slightly higher because the sensor on the light meter is a little bit forward from where this is focused. So it's probably going to be closer to 118, maybe 120. Let's take a look at the voltage, 4.8. So now let me see what we got here. All right, let's put maybe 200 milliamps here. Hit power on. Now before we had 0.2 watts, now we're at 0.8 watts, 4.2 volts, and we're supplying 200 milliamps of current, 230 maybe, and 4 volts. So let's take a look at the temperature here again. See if it's actually cooling any better. 147 and 64 C. So far this is doing good, and that is definitely heating up. So the heat from the solar panel is transferring into the heat sink, keeping the temperature lower. So if this panel was actually 10 cells in series to get it to around 5.3, 5.4 volts, you would have this voltage higher, around 4.5, which would make it very useful for charging USB devices, and you would have a lot of current. So let me see what we got here. 230 milliamps, we're right around 4 volts, 0.8. And the other one before was, I think, 4.1, around 60, 240. So we're around four times the amount of current. Okay, this has been sitting in the sun now for about 10 minutes. Voltage is at 4.7, it could be a hair higher, I don't know, or it could be just a little under. But that's still better than the solar panel without the Fresnel lens. And when I did this experiment before, it was 4.9 volts, and then it quickly dropped down. So this is definitely cooling that solar panel. Let's take a look at the temperature again. Like I said, it's been about 10 minutes. 70 C, or 160. And right over here, after about 25 minutes, it just went 4.6, which isn't bad, because this is over a half of a volt higher than what this panel did before without the cooling added. So this does work. Of course, a larger heat sink would do a better job cooling. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.